Hi, Rama. It's week 16, day one of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we are in uh, 1 Samuel chapters 1 through 3. And as we're going to see throughout our study in 1 and 2 Samuel, we're going to be here for several weeks with a few Psalms and, and Proverbs thrown in, as has been our custom. But with 1 and 2 Samuel, we realize there's a lot of details. And in order to try to keep these videos short, I'm going to work very hard at being concise and maybe just drawing out a few big picture things for you. Uh, rather than getting down in all of the details, uh, those types of things are better served in sermons rather than in the purpose of these videos, which is to be short. So as we begin our study of 1 Samuel, I, I just want to remind you where we've come from. We've seen the book of Judges, and at the end, uh, it's sum summarized saying that in those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Then we looked at the book of Ruth, and we see how God was working, even in the days of the Judges, in this small family of Naomi and of Ruth. And at the end of that book, we saw the connection. We saw the uh, the, the um, genealogy telling us of how we got to, from Ruth and Naomi, Boaz, their story in the book of Ruth, how that leads us to the story of King David. So we understand that even the book of Ruth is pointing us forward to what we're going to see in First and Second Samuel, this man that we know as King David. But as First and Second Samuel begins, uh, one, I want to point out a reminder that in, in the Hebrew, it's just one book. It's the book of Samuel. But we've divided it up in our English Bibles just for ease of reading. So in the book of Samuel, it begins in, in one chapter 1 through chapter 3. We are introduced to this character named Samuel. He reminds us in some ways of what we saw uh, in the birth of Samson, the judge. Uh, Samuel is carrying on in this tradition of the judges in many ways. We don't yet have a king. We'll get to that point in our reading. But yet, as we continue looking at this, uh, the birth of this young man named Samuel, we see that God's hand is upon him in a way that it wasn't on Samson. As we begin in chapter 1, we see his wonderful birth narrative. Many of you are familiar with it. Uh, 1 Samuel 1 has always been a comfort to so many women and, and husbands as well who were seeking to have a child and had to really pray to the Lord and God would hear their prayer uh, to give birth to children. That's a, a comfort for us in chapter 1. But what I really want to draw your attention to is Hannah's prayer in chapter 2 because Hannah prays a very big prayer. She prays a prayer that is concerned with much more than just the birth of her son because she prays for details uh, that really don't relate to the birth of her son, Samuel. She's praying bigger things. In, in some ways, Hannah's prayer sets up uh, sort of like a table of contents or a thematic overview of what we will see throughout the book of Samuel, First and Second Samuel. Many of the things that she prays for uh, will, will ring in our ears as we continue through the book of Samuel. But even here at the beginning, we understand that, that there's the birth of this, this child, Samuel. We have hope for him. We know the Lord has his hand on him. But he's contrasted with the man, Eli, the priest Eli. And we need to be reminded that Eli did not recognize God at work. When Hannah comes to Eli, Eli thinks that she's drunk. And then when the boy Samuel goes to live with Eli, Eli's first instinct, his first response is not to say, hey, perhaps God is talking to you. Uh, instead, uh, Eli doesn't quite know what to do. And so this is a reminder that even as in the book of Judges, in those days there was no king in Israel and everyone did what, did what was right in his own eyes. And then as we begin the book of Samuel, we're reminded that uh, the word of the Lord was not very frequent in those days. And yet by the time Samuel comes along, we see very quickly that God is speaking through Samuel. And it begins even in his childhood. And so... Uh, that's a, a very important emphasis for us. Even as we go into chapter 3, we see that uh, the word of the Lord is coming through Samuel. And so while we might glean application for us about how we're supposed to listen to the Lord, here's the big picture, is that while there's been a famine in the land in the book of Ruth, and while there's been a, an absence of leadership in the book of Judges, and while there hasn't been a lot of word from the Lord in these early chapters of Samuel, now we see that God is speaking through this prophet and priest, Samuel. And so that points us forward to what's going to come. It reminds us that God is at work in the life of Israel, and it reminds us that he's continually in work, at work in our lives. Here's a summary of today's reading.
For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.